Welcome back to Jack Fleming Artistry. This is pinstriping practice part two. The last video of this, I started this panel. Um, I put down one color on it, and if you followed along on that, it's kind of some experimenting, me trying to come up with some new moves and stuff, some new ways of thinking while coming up with the design. Um, we're gonna put a second color down on this today. If you haven't watched the last video, go back and watch that. There's a lot to be learned from it. And again, this is going to be in real time, so it's a bit of a lengthy video. But I'm going to try and talk as I work and talk through the thought process on stuff so that you guys at least see what my mind is doing while I'm trying to come up with a good design here. Okay, when I'm working on somebody's car, that's usually not the time that I experiment. But a panel like this gives me a good opportunity to do so. In the last video, I had a grid drawn out across here, pretty big chunky grid. Um, took the width of my big fat T-square and just repeated that. I'm not using a grid today. Um, I didn't draw the design off before, put something down, think about what to do next. But with the second color, I thought, you know, I'm gonna break out the pencil and I'm gonna sketch through some ideas because it gives me an opportunity again to experiment. I can put something down. If I don't like it, wipe it off. This whole piece for me is, I guess in a way, playing around with, with some new design words, language. Um, I don't know really what you want to call it, but trying to come up with some different ideas. One thing I see is there's less room here than there is here. So I think something I don't normally do is come way up above that, but I know I want to get closer up here. Um, so I don't know. We'll imagine that that straight there. I hope you guys can see these marks I'm making. <laughs> if not, I might have to edit this out, but I don't know. Maybe if we come outside of that, and you can't really see that. Let's get down a little closer here. Maybe y'all can see it now. There we go. All right, so maybe the idea of coming outside of that works um my mind wants to come out here but again i'm trying to do stuff i don't normally do so i think about the idea what if i made some sort of cross over here of course that limits me where am i going to go with that i don't know yet so we can play with that idea when we put the brush to it we'll get that cross to work better um might not make for a very good video if you guys can't see it. I'm come inside of this empty space here. Let's bring that out the same as that. And come in a little bit more. I can just kind of wet my finger here to erase. That's kind of nice because it starts to break up that centerpiece. I don't know. It has gotten pretty cold here I'm sure again in the video you see i'm wearing layers uh, my hands are cold too studio's not very warm yet today it's warming up i don't think i like that i'm kind of liking this part of it but maybe to give myself a little bit more room we don't come down quite so far before we cross over I like this crossover thing. Let's bring it up a little higher. One thing that I'm going to have to watch for is making sure that cross goes right in the center of that. I almost feel like it's easier to do with the brush than it is to do with the pencil. Um, I'm planning on, since this was kind of a dull and darker blue, using a brighter and lighter blue, maybe. I'm also trying to think through some ideas of using some different colors. My complementary color to blue is orange, so that might be something good to experiment with. I wonder... There's a way to come back up here into this space. Or do I want to leave all that negative space up there? I kind of feel like I might. I could take this and come 
out of that, but I feel like that's something that I do a lot. And I like the idea sometimes of trying to make these come back to that, like it's completing the shape that's here, but yet I'm not completing it. So I'm making a negative shape here. I like that. Let's see if we can get the other side to... I think something to do is to try and not get too complex on the second color. That way I've got room for a third color without getting too busy. <laughs> I think as we do pinstriping or any kind of art and we look at other people's art, we see things that we like that other people do or that we do ourselves and uh, we kind of create our own design language. Um, I see a lot of people that make designs that in my eyes are busier than the designs I want to make. I like leaving some negative space. I feel like it gives your eye an opportunity to rest. I like kind of clean, simple designs sometimes. That might be really cool. Actually, what might be nice to do with this, I can either take this line and do something else with it, or it might be cool to let it become fat. As it comes out, it fattens up a little bit, comes back, and just ends. Um... I guess you could call it a rule in a way, but one of the things that a lot of us try not to do as pinstripers, some of us would say is definitely a rule, is to leave open ends. Um, if I've got a skinny line that just comes and ends and it stays skinny the whole time, it makes it look unfinished. Uh, I know there's people out there that get defensive and want to disagree with that, but it's my opinion. It's not just my opinion, it's the opinion of a lot of other people. I think a lot of people come back later and look at that and they realize, yeah, it's probably right. <laughs> um, if I do this and I end that, it's different than what's going on here. This is all one line. The whole design. Do I want to make this to where it's all one line? And just have each color be one line? Or do I really care? <laughs> I like the idea of something fat happening but I don't have anything fat happening in that blue, so I might change my mind on that. I have been enjoying looking at some people that make shapes that they fill in. I've been experimenting with filling in stuff a little bit more. Maybe there's an idea of a filled in shape right here. I don't know. Again, Playing around, I'm afraid if I do that, that these will look like eyes, and that looks like a nose, and then we got a mouth. So I think I'm not going to do that. So I don't want that to happen. Again, this is that playing around, figuring stuff out. I get this drawn off, and then it'll be pretty quick to paint. So if I don't want to have that happen, then I might want to break this somehow so it doesn't look like eyes. Um, I've got a kind of neat spot here that I could come up into. I like the shape that was made here. I don't know if I want to disturb that. Or maybe we come inside of it. If I'm drawing stuff out like this, sometimes I end up jumping around in the design rather than just going top to bottom. But again, this is experimentation. Um, figuring out things that might work, might not. Hmm. I think I like the idea of breaking that centerpiece there by having the section that crosses over here. Oh, what if somehow we mess with that crossover that was there and pull something down, almost like it's going to connect to that, but we're not going to let it connect, kind of like we did up here. But I'm not going to let it be fat that time. That's a good place to change directions and maybe come back out here or something. Oh, look at this. I can cross over these and come out here. Something I try not to do is cross at too sharp of an angle. Um, I just don't like the way that those look. I feel like it makes my designs look too busy. I find it better to cross close to a 90 on something. So if I come from here 
and I come up, I might be able to. Let's see, do I want to have that big of a loop? Or do I want to come farther up? I don't know that I want that to repeat what that's doing. I have too much of that repetition, but what happens if I do? Yeah, I don't like it. I like where this is going. I just, what if I come back? Make that be a point. It's kind of opposite of that point. And then we come out and around this. That's interesting. Um, maybe come in a little farther with it. That's more interesting, I think. Hope you guys can see these lines. If I move this over here, you can see it a little better. So, up, up, over, it's kind of like that. I try to repeat some things to kind of keep some sense of unity. Um, let's see, where did this cross? Somewhere around here, out here. Yeah, I'm kind of liking how that's. Personally, I don't like designs where everything in it seems pointy. So I like to have some curves with my points. So for me, this comes out and it's, it's, it's a curve out here, right? I've got curves and points. And I really like that. So I want to do that again somewhere, but I think since that's up here, I'm going to do something like it down here somewhere. Or maybe in the opposite direction. I don't know. Right now, I still want to do something here. I just don't know what. Sometimes I just draw, let it figure it out on its own. It might be a weird looking shape. We keep stuff small here. We can come. I don't know if I follow that up at some point. Maybe that's what the next color might be an interesting thing to do. Again, if I do it, I don't want to be too sharp on my crossovers there. I feel like that's a little low. We're going to come up a little bit more. And we come in somewhere around here. If I was working on someone's car, I feel like it would take way too much time to do this. When I'm working on cars, I don't do as much experimenting and stick to things that I know I like and work. I think that's where I got kind of in a rut you know, towards the end of the fall car show season. It's just doing car after car and often doing designs, staying safe, I guess, not experimenting as much. I envy some of the people I know out there that draw designs all the time. My friend Steve Lee's got notebooks. I imagine he sits there when he's at his regular job if he's waiting in his truck because he delivers stuff. He's probably sitting there drawing up designs. A couple years ago, I had an opportunity to go up to Ohio. I know I've talked about that before see a bunch of other pinstripers that I've always looked up to. And I remember we went out to eat breakfast one morning and uh, I was sitting there with Steve Shizeka and I think Jen Thomas. And Dwayne Conant and his wife were, and I might be mispronouncing his last name there, I don't know. But anyhow, they were sitting at another table and he was drawing the whole time. And I thought that was really cool. And he'd send text message pictures to Steve of what he was drawing. 
which was neat. Those two seem to have a cool friendship. It's also neat to see. We developed those. I had a couple of other pinstripers over here to my shop the other day, last week, after that last video that I made. And uh, so nice to hang out with other people that are interested in the same things. Ooh, I like the idea of coming over here. And then once I get there, because that's starting to look way too much like eyeballs, I want to cut through the middle of those. So if I do that, what do I want to do with it? Ooh, here's an idea. If I come here, almost like it lines up to that, I can make this something out here. I get a shape, right? And it's kind of a neat shape. So I'm going to do that because I like that shape. And yes, it's going through my mind. Am I making this too busy? Maybe, maybe not until we get some color on it. Kind of hard to tell, but I do like that. Right there, that breaks that up. And if this is lighter and all, then maybe that won't look so much like an eyeball anymore. So we're going to bring this line over here. Okay, I remember when I was in college taking design, one of the things they talked about, and I'm trying to remember the terminology, it was continuity of edge. So if I have the edge of something and there's something else lined up somewhere, they might not touch or connect, but my mind will kind of connect them. So I'm kind of hoping that's what's going on here. We're closing that shape with our mind without actually closing it. I might bring this a little higher so that your mind could imagine bridging across there. It's kind of neat. Okay, so I like that looping up. But if I'm closing this off, that might not be the way to do it. Again, I do not normally draw out designs. The times that I do is usually on a panel. I don't think there's anything wrong with drawing out your designs. Some of the best looking work that I see from some artists, they draw them completely out every time. And it's cool. This is interesting. What I've got going on right here in the center. I brought that up a little, brought this up and across. I want to make sure those look lined up really good though and straight because if that's off it's going to make the whole thing look crooked I kind of like that I think some of the fixing of that's going to happen with the brush but it's a good way to break that up it almost looks like a little butterfly design in there I might in the end take another line come through here let's bring one for now to see if that helps us line it up but yeah, I need to come over here a little more. Come this way with that a little more, just in case I decide to do that later. Because that might be a good way to break this up again, too. So I think this is looking pretty cool. Might be nice if that's thick to thin the hair. I'm going to need to get something else thick and thin going on so that that's not the only one. Let's look at what we got going on here. I'm trying to move this up so you guys can see the pencil well. I've got the lights directly above me off because they were creating too much of a glare. Man, I love that shape. How can I do something else like that? Maybe what it look like out here to have the opposite go on yeah, maybe it does come up like that yeah. I don't like it <laughs> don't like it wipe it I'm not even into paint and I'm wiping stuff off I don't like let's see we might 
do something in here. It's like a shape inside a shape. Kind of how I have this shape now is inside of that shape. And then maybe we break out from here. Don't know until we try it. It comes down a little more. No. When it breaks out, it goes opposite. I don't know. I feel like we got tight, tiny shapes through here. Some tight, tiny shapes through there. Might not want to deviate from that too much. Maybe we come back in. So it's uh, maybe we're up at an angle like that. And it's a little higher on that side. Ah, I'm still hoping y'all can see this mess. So here I might come. Oh, look at that. I can try to connect to that. Again, not connecting completely. It's that letting your mind fill it in. So now we've created a shape in here, right? Hmm. I feel like this is empty here and might need something. What could it use? What happens if there's a shape in this area? It's kind of building off of that arc, right? Rather than coming back up there, because I don't want to just trace stuff. Yeah, maybe we're small right here. Trying to come up with stuff I don't normally do. See if I like it. It's kind of interesting, but it's kind of getting... I don't know. I'm mumbling on the camera for y'all. Oh, here's an idea. We had a fat right there, right? If we do this, this can give us an opportunity to come out here inside of that curve. And do I go up higher? Like up here? And make it fat and end? Or do I do it lower? And have it end fat here? I like it higher. So, it's an experiment, right? Hypothesis. Draw it out. Change it up. Something that goes fatter and ends being fatter. It's coming around here, across, up. Let's see, we were up to there. We came in a little bit. We followed that curve. Let's make sure that we're about where we want to be right there. And we're going to follow this around. Like I said, this video is going to kind of let you guys know how my mind's working on stuff. Some of the thoughts that I have when I'm trying to design stuff. I know folks that are just like, man, you think too much. Just feel it out and let it go. And Man, I'm too analytical. I can't do that. <laughs> it's not me. you got to play to your strengths. Some people are really good at that. They just get in the zone and let it be. I struggle to get in the zone. And to just fill things out. Got to be true to myself sometimes. I kind of like this with the, the fat ones that come here and these ones come here. It kind of reminds me, and I've done some stuff before that reminded me of this, of, man, I'm going to sound like a nerd here. <laughs> you know, like a, an atom has all the little neutrons and electrons, I think they're called, spinning around it. So here I've got something spinning out that way, and this one's coming up there. With that in mind, I'm going to have to have something else down here kind of spinning out, probably. Kind of cool. I like that. Atomic feel. A lot of the cool designs coming out of the 50s and stuff. 
late 40s were based off of things like that. Atomic Boomerang. Cool stuff like that. All right, so we're pretty busy here. We got to do something down here. We've done this whole thing where whenever something's coming like this, it seems to be being continued. So somehow, I think we're going to need to do something down here that does that, right? It comes up in here, wraps around that. Maybe a little farther over here on that. I don't want it to look like that's going to totally intersect it. The more that they continue each other. How do I do that? Let's knock some of that down a little. Bring this up so you guys can see what's going on better. Move some stuff on my desk. There we go. Okay, so again, follow that. Maybe rather than going totally up there, maybe we're coming out a little bit more. I don't know. These all kind of seem to come from the center and around in ways, and if I do that, it's not. So, again, I don't like it. Let's come on the inside of this. And come up with something that kind of... I keep wanting to just kind of cut across right here with something. Maybe we're like that. So it's got some of these, you know, small break and come out again, things like that. It's all about playing around. You know, if we do that, it reminds me a lot of that fat part there. So maybe we're, maybe we're going to be fat on this. Well, I feel like there needs to be more going on with this, though, if we do that. We'll figure it out. Let's get it drawn off first. I realize when I'm doing this stuff, you know, I come across stuff that's not even. That's okay. Handmade. It's got idiosyncrasies to it. It's not going to be perfect. I'm going to flip this upside down just because my hand draws that shape better. Like this. Sometimes when you flip your eye or your drawings upside down. You can see things that are out of whack easier too. So like this needs to come up here a little more. All right. There's definitely gotta be a lot more going on down here than what we got. I know one of the things I was playing with last time was the idea of stuff kind of going in and out and in and out and in and out. Right, out, in, out, in. Right now, I'm playing around with this idea of continuing shapes. Maybe I'm getting away from what it was that I wanted to do. Maybe I should rethink what I'm doing. It's starting to get really busy looking to me. I want to keep going. <laughs> I feel like it'd be cool to come off of this like that somehow. But then again, I feel like I'm taking up space that there's a nice negative space here that sort of balances that negative space. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Hmm. There's a cool shape there. Maybe we do something. What if there's the idea of something out here shape wise? Hmm. I don't think that really lends itself to what we've got going on so far design-wise. It doesn't hurt anything, but it just doesn't jive real well. It doesn't have unity. Big on unity. Alright, I paused the camera there for a second because I had to sit here and really think. I think what I'm doing with these lines, it looks too busy to me right now. But, 
If I look at what I've put down as two different colors, then I think I can see where it won't be so busy. So really quick, because I feel like I'm getting real rambly in this video. If I look at this part right here, where it comes as one color, okay, I'm going to have one color here that's going to be kind of simple. If I come down, or well, if I look at that other part, that'd be a different color. It kind of makes a cool crossing over shape. So I think that color is going to go on before this one. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to come through and I'm going to just put a little deal there. I don't want to start with that. I want to start with this other one. Um, because I think the brightest color I want to be this here, where these fat parts are here, that's also part of that. Okay. This part is going to be that top color. And I think, I'm thinking of it that way, let's give it one more line maybe right across here to make that kind of an interesting shape. Maybe we even do two. I don't know. I didn't do that anywhere else up here. So I don't know. But, hmm, maybe that part breaks, comes down. Let's try that. Let's try that. That part I like. We're going to let this come. That way it creates kind of a cool shape here. Maybe rather than coming to a point with that, I'm experimenting again, trying to come up with some new ideas rather than repeating the same old stuff. What if somehow this comes over? It's kind of looking a little bit Art Nouveau. I did something like that. Don't know if I like it. I don't know that I like that. Uh, maybe this comes down. Right? Down. Bring that back. I hope you guys can see this. I got it's too far down. Okay, that's there. Maybe we come out and over. Getting too busy. I'm looking at how I had this cool crossover here. So I think it'd be cool to somehow cross over. Oh, look. Let's think of it as a shape like that. So let's come up here. Okay, and maybe this comes down into that. Something like that. Ooh, maybe a little sharper. A little curvier there. Into that. I don't know, man. It's something different for sure. Is it ugly? <laughs> um, maybe I want it to curve like this instead of that other way. Maybe we're not following that. Maybe we come way up here. Almost like it's following that continuity thing there again. At least that's what we're calling it for the moment. Might be using that term wrong. Okay, this comes out here. This comes out here. This is going to be curvy and like that. Yeah, I like that. It's different. I guess the real test of if we did a good job is if anybody wants to buy it when it's done. <laughs> I've mentioned it, I think, in the last video, but part of me doing these practice panels is it gives me uh, some more stuff to have in my store. Store that I set up at car shows. Most of the time when I do that, though, I end up putting them online and they end up selling before they ever make it to the booth. And you know it's okay. I'm sure one day I'm not going to be able to do car shows. If I can build up a market of selling stuff online, that might be even better. So that's a cool shape. So if we're talking about the one color being here, that, and down here it is this then that's not too far off from that. 
Um, would that be a good idea? Maybe. Maybe come here. Curve that back. Keeps some of that stuff going on that we got going on up there. We got these little zigzaggy things twice on that. Um, I don't have them there, but I do have that crossover that I think kind of speaks the same language a little bit. So maybe we do that. I think I might leave this. Go ahead and put this color down. We'll remember that those lines go to that other one after we've got this color. Oh, wait. I was going to do that color first, so I do need to draw that out. Turn it into a really lengthy video, guys. <laughs> but it's us figuring stuff out. So let's go ahead and figure that. I'm going to have that line there. Let's do something that repeats it. I'm going to turn this upside down again. It's a matey. Let's see. It is kind of cool. Kind of works. So I'm almost thinking again, like this line is one. We'll do another one here. I feel like it needs to come up into that somehow. So maybe to repeat that kind of angular thing, maybe what we do is we come from here and we go up just across over that shape a little bit. Creates kind of a Christmas tree looking shape. There's a little kindergarten Christmas trees. Where you do the over and over again. All right, but we're going to come here just so that that's up in that, right? And remember, that's going on top. So whatever I do here, I think I want it to cross somewhere in here. Let's see. Kind of like that. I do feel like it'd be nice to get out here somewhere somehow hmm. that might be too much sometimes I like to take these and have them come like that. But again, we're trying not to do stuff that we always do. And I don't have anything else, anything like that in here. Let's go back and look at this shape. Crossover comes out and has a point to it. I haven't done that yet. This right here, where it crosses back like that, reminds me of this part. Hmm. Crossed up. Oh, yeah, it comes up here. Makes what a buddy of mine calls my bunny ears. Um, I think we need something of this sort of rounded bunny ear type thing down here. So maybe this is going to come here and then come in. It's very doable. Maybe we come like we go into that. If I do that, I kind of want to come. Oh, yeah, that gives me something to do that's pointy. And it swoops with that. Not a bad idea. Let's make it curve up a little bit more, though. Get rid of that part. Oh, yeah, I like that. It looks a lot like what's going on up top there. So let's repeat that on this side. We're up to that point. Came close there. Somewhere around there. Boy, I'm not going to have to think at all when I got the paint. We'll just be able to blow and go. All right, so this. I'm going to make sure that that gap kind of stays somewhere around the same all the way down. I know I'll do a better job with the brush. I'm going to let this have a little soft point to it here. It's not going to be totally round. 
neither of these. It's kind of like that shape. So, and then we came, so it's almost like this. Oh, uh, yeah, let's play with that a little bit more. Make it a little more like that's what's going on. They don't connect, but they look like they could. knows when it's done this could be the best looking panel ever or the worst looking panel ever experimentation I'll flip this upside down because again sometimes when I do that I can see man I learned that when I was in high school a million years ago take your drawings you know we'd be drawing faces and they'd say flip it upside down and you'll see what's wrong with it and you could flip it upside down and it's like oh man that eye's out of whack or that nostril's jacked up so I can flip this upside down. I'm like, okay, that was too far up here. Brought it down some. My curve was off a little. I can fix it. So for drawing stuff out, that's a cool little trick. Flip it upside down. You'll see what's going on. It's interesting now because I've got this curve and that curve. And I guess that's kind of like what's going on here. We'll let it be. Or will we? Do we want that to come out here instead of being in there? Or maybe way out here? No, we don't. We're going to leave it alone. So that's here. We haven't quite finished it off. If we look at this design here again, it was this one. So it's here, out, in, over, out. It's one line and it finishes. So I'd love to have that happen with this. So somehow I want to get from here back to the other side. What if... Right in here, we have a line that comes across with it. And maybe it comes almost out. Almost out. Right up here. And then this creates a sharp point like that one was. Right? We're going to have to knock a lot of this pencil down so it doesn't mess up the paint. This won't come up quite so high. All right? We can move those. It's only in pencil. Heck, we can move them if it was paint. Really wouldn't matter. That's what mineral spirits are for. All right. I think we're getting it. Something I encourage everybody to do I try to do look at other artists look at things you see that they do see if it gives you ideas don't try to copy stuff I'm not looking at any artist while I'm working on this but I look at them a lot and I seem to remember things I seem to remember this kind of in and out thing I feel like I see a lot in some of the artists like uh, is it Beth Kearney Kearney I don't know how you say her name Little Dame's Pinstripe, right? Um, all this other stuff has nothing to do with what I think of when I think of her designs. These kind of designs like I'm doing here seem to remind me of some Art Nouveau, Art Deco kind of stuff a little bit. This part right here mostly. Um, which kind of bothers me because I don't have as much of that going on up here, but I'm not going to let it bother me too much. Uh, what was I saying with that? <laughs> You know, look at other people's stuff. One of the things as busy as this kind of looks to me, one of the people that I like who can pull off busy really well is an artist called Zeke Lemansky. I'd love to meet him or talk to him. His work is some of my favorite. And whenever I get going on this when it's done, maybe I'll go back and look at some of his stuff and see if this looks busy, how can I keep it busy and make it work? But I think we're going to go with how it is at the moment. Might be too busy down here, not busy enough up here. We can add stuff later to fix that. All right, I've spent a lot of time with the pencils on this. I think as much time as I spent with paint last time. So I'm going to put the next color on this, the second color on it, but I'm going to let it be hyperlapse in the video. And we'll come back and do a part three where we'll put that third color on and then make decisions about stuff that we might want to add to it. Um think this will be a good way to keep these videos about the same length. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that real quick. 
Got to shout out my own merchandise and stuff because that's how we pay the bills around here. It's freezing cold here, but if you notice, I got a little beanie cap on. I don't have those available yet on my website. I think this is the only one that's been made. But I do have hoodies that can help keep you all warm this time of year. Uh, www www.jackflemingartistry.com I'm going to go ahead and jump into the paint on this and let you guys watch that in sped up speed. One thing to note as we get started, I actually messed up and didn't start with the color that I wanted to. I ended up, or I started with the color I wanted to, but I put it on the wrong set of lines. Um, I didn't catch that for a little bit. So I decided to go ahead and roll with it and we'll probably figure out a different game plan for color whenever we get to the next set of lines. Uh, in the next video you also notice I'm a big fan of if you don't like something wipe it off if it doesn't look like it's working right and you can go ahead and do that uh, also like to spend a lot of extra time fixing corners and stuff if I have the time to do it which working on this I definitely do again the big goal of me doing this practice panel is to try and figure out some different design things that I like so not really worried about speed, not really working with things that I work with all the time as far as design elements, trying to work up some new ones. If I like them and I decide to incorporate them on other stuff, then I'll practice them a lot and get faster at them. I don't think practice is anything to get stressed out about. Since we are wrapping up the video here, I won't talk a whole lot about what's going on color-wise in this one. Um, other than the fact that I took the complement of blue, which is orange, and muted it down to where it's almost a brown, uh, and then lightened it up just a little bit so it stands out good from that blue. I know this has been a pretty long video, probably hard to really see what's going on in most of it because I did it all in pencil. Please give me feedback on that and let me know what y'all think. This will probably be the only video that I'll do something like that in, but if y'all like it and you want more stuff like that, let me know. Uh, again, if you like it, hit the like button, give me some comments, and uh, keep watching until the end here, and maybe click on one of the other videos that pops up, but hope you all have a, a good day, and again, let me know if you're enjoying this, and we'll talk to you all later. See y'all next time.